Today, I wanted to talk about some habits that made me a better coder and quantitative trader. If you're in either industry, software development, or more specifically quantitative trading, this video is for you. Grab some popcorn and let's get started. Nobody wants to be stagnant in life. We all want to improve to live our life to the fullest potential. We want to improve our financial future. We want to improve our communication, our relationships. We want to improve our time management and efficiency. And I think habits help build those improvements and help you actually reach your goal in the long run. When it comes to coding and quantitative trading, habits are crucial to be successful in the long term. They take a long time to develop and you need to start now with good habits so they have time to build. As Warren Buffett once said, someone is sitting in the shade today because they planted a tree a long time ago. Habits help you build and plant those trees so you can sit in the shade in the future. So habit number one is writing down crucial tasks that need to get done. This habit helps me be the most productive every day. And what I do every morning is write three to five tasks that are really important in my sticky notes on Windows that need to get done. You could use something like Trello or even write it in an actual notebook, but I'm more of a tech guy and I like the sticky notes. Anyways, doing this every day, this habit will lead you to be extremely productive as you're able to sort of gamify the process by writing down the tasks that need to get done and completing them. You can check them off or cross them out. And that sort of gives you a sense of purpose and accomplishment with getting that task done, just sort of like a video game. And I think this habit is one of the most important and something you should start with every day, writing those tasks down and getting them done. And maybe you wanna separate them from personal and business, however you decide to do it, but writing tasks every day is amazing and you'll see a lot of benefits in terms of productivity by doing that. Another benefit of writing down your tasks every day and checking them off is focus, right? Some mornings you wake up and you have a little bit of brain fog, maybe you had a late night, or maybe there's just a lot going on in your life and you're kind of stressed with a lot of things. You don't know what to work on for the, for the day. By writing those tasks down, it kind of fixes that, right? It, it, it puts your blinders on, it puts your filters on and say, all right, let's get these three to five things done because I know they're very important today and you can just focus on those and check them off and, and deal with other stuff later. So I think it's a really good solution for focus as well and just being productive and trying to basically filter the unnecessary stuff out for the time being. So habit number two is documenting as I go. Say I'm working on a new feature or maybe a new trading strategy, documenting that process as I'm working on it helps me solidify the task and actually leads to a better goal and future success. So I'm gonna explain that. So say I'm adding a new feature to some type of application, right? And say I write all the code and I don't explain any of it and maybe I push it or, or maybe I get another de developer to look at it. As soon as they look at it with no documentation, obviously it's gonna be very hard for them to understand. You know, I could sit there and explain it to them in, in front of their face in, in plain English, but that'd be not really productive and sort of a waste of time. If I just documented as I went, if I wrote code blocks before the logic and explained what it did and, and what this line of code did and what that line of code did, it would actually save a lot of time and help that new person to, um, understand what's going on and what I wrote. So this habit, documenting as you go, is, is really good for setting up future success. It saves you time if you ever have to go back to that task or code in this case um, by understanding and saying, oh, that's how it works because, you know, Jacob... Uh, documented it. So it's really important to document before you actually start implementing any type of feature or system. And this goes for trading strategies as well. Before I even create the trading strategy, you know, I'm documenting how it works, what markets it does well in, what's the risk, that sort of stuff. So if I ever need to go back to it, uh, maybe stop it or, or start it, I, I know what those values are and, and what that kind of looks like. So really important to document as I go. I know a lot of you watching this video that are coders like to just start coding right away and, and you know, going hard in the paint as they say but you know take your time and comment your code before you start implementing it and it will actually sometimes you actually catch yourself and say hey why am i doing this um, as you're writing the, the the commenting code you know why am i doing this why am i working on this we don't need to do that so sometimes you actually catch yourself uh having to or catch yourself not writing wasteful code because you're thinking of it before you're doing it so anyways that was sort of a rant there but documenting as i go is super important and helps, you know, I'd say clean the process of implementing new features or fixing bugs and, and minimizing mistakes. So habit number three is prioritizing testing, debugging, and getting a second set of eyes on your work. I've made countless mistakes where I've been way too cocky and tried to rush some type of coding project to impress someone that, 
you know, in the end, there was a bunch of issues with it and it, it wasn't ready, right? I've made that mistake many, many times. I could count more than the fingers on my hand. But what I've learned is really take your time with testing, okay? Take, you know, testing sometimes takes longer than actually implementing the code because you have to test for every scenario, right? So definitely prioritize your testing. Don't rush putting products out. And I'll give you a very specific example. I've created many trading strategies that have flopped, right? They do well, you know, I, I test them, I, I back test them, and they, they look all right in history, and then I go to run them live, and the real-time performance sucks, they don't do well. Had I maybe debugged it or tested it for a longer period of time, maybe I wouldn't have run those strategies. So now what I do, with every trading strategy that I launch, you know, I like to run it in a paper or sim environment for one month, okay? So I back test the strategy, it looks good in say, you know, the last three, four years, and then I actually run it live, but with a simulated environment where I'm not using real money for one month. And generally in that month, it's able to tell me if that strategy is good or not, if there's bugs in the strategies, um, if there's um, issues with position sizing, it's able to tell me all that without having me you know, risk capital, of course, right? So a lot of people wouldn't test something for a month. Like a month sounds like a long time, but it's worth it in the end because I'd rather be closer to right the first time than getting something out faster, but then not being right and having to, you know, scramble to fix it. So really prioritize testing and take it seriously. I know everyone here that's watching if, if they're software developers love coding and implementing new features and fixing bugs fast. That's great, but take your time testing as well. Be patient with it. And secondly, get someone to look at your work, get an external source to get to, to, to look at your work, a friend, a colleague, whatever it may be, get them to look at it, explain to the code to them how it works and, and see what their feedback's like. Generally, they're able to find stuff as well, right? And fix your mistakes. And that's great. That's that's bettering the overall goal that you're trying to achieve. But getting someone else to, to, to look at it is extremely important. Um, I know when I first started coding, I was very, I wouldn't say antisocial, but I was hesitant to talk to other people and ask for help because I felt like a loser or like I'm an idiot. But as I started working with other people and, and other teams, um, my productivity has increased a lot because I'm able to just simply ask someone, um, you know, hey, can you take a look at this? And they're able to fix something, right? And I, I get better and faster and more productive in the future. So get someone to look at your work, whether it's, like I said, a friend, a colleague, someone on Discord, whatever it may be. Um, getting help will get help you get work done faster and more productively and you're able to build relationships and, 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 and network and that's always a benefit as well. So habit number three is really prioritize testing, debugging, and getting a second set of eyes to look at your work. Let me know in the comments below if you use some of these habits, if you document as you go, or you write town tasks and sticky notes every day, or if you really prioritize testing and debugging, let me know in the comments below if you do these tasks. And if not, I would recommend try them. I think they'll make your life better, more productive, and efficient. Anyways, that's all for the video, guys. We'll see you next week. Have a good one.